Hi everybody, it's Jill and I'm Caitlin from Sensational Development and we wanted to give you a little more information on ocular motor skills since it can be such a niche area and take time to find out what it is, how to test it, and where to go if there is a difficulty. Um, so we wanted to go over some information. There are 17 different visual skills. Um, we wanted to demonstrate parts of the ocular screen that we do here and some strengthening techniques. Um, of note, it's important to be evaluated by an occupational therapist and have oversight from that therapist when you're doing these activities. We also recommend an evaluation and follow-up from a developmental optometrist who may sometimes also recommend vision therapy in addition to that. Um, there are some basic things I wanted to tell you before we show you the screen. There's, you need eye movement control um, so each eye has six muscles to control the eye movement and position. So looking at our left eye, we have a muscle here, 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 and two oblique muscles as well. You also need binocular coordination, which means both eyes moving together. Um, Sometimes when there's a difficulty with this, you may see a difference in positioning of the eyes, such as something like a lazy eye. All right, so now we're going to, going to, going to go into the ocular screen. So I'm going to take a look at Jill's ocular motor skills just to show you guys how we screen this in an evaluation or just to reassess. So the first thing I'm going to look at are her cicades. So I'm going to hold up two different color flashlights and tell her which ones to look at so I could see how her eyes are moving and I could pick out any part of her eye that needs to be a little bit stronger. Jill, can you look at the black and the red and black, red. I'm going to move them up just to look at different muscles. Can you look at the red and black, red, black. Can you look at the red and the black one? And red, black. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna look at are, I'm just gonna see how her eyes are tracking a moving object. So I'm gonna see how her eyes are moving horizontally. Can you look at my flashlight and keep your head still? Okay, so we're gonna go horizontal. Oh, yep. Oh. So what we're looking for is that movement of her head. If I see a child or anybody is moving their head instead of their eyes, that means they're having difficulty disassociating their eyes from their head, and that could be a possible weakness of the eye muscles. So I'm going to move up and down, up, down. Sometimes I like to move in a circle too, just to see. Good. And we'll go the other way. Nice job, Jill. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I'm going to look at is convergence and divergence. So that's um, how the eyes move when an object is moving towards us and away from us. So ideally, we'd like to see the eyes moving together as something is moving towards the eyes. So that's a skill that we use when we either catch a ball or catch anything being thrown at us. So. You're going to look at my flashlight as it's coming towards you. Let me know when you can't see it anymore. Can't see it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to come back out. Okay. Good job, Jill. So the next thing that we're going to talk about are some activities that we could do at home to help strengthen the ocular motor skills of kids that are currently being seen for OT or anyone that just wants to work on your skills. So <laughs> um, a thing that I like to recommend a lot are bubbles. So this includes uh, either both eye-hand coordination and ocular motor skills to strengthen those in a functional way. And um, to work on convergence and divergence, I like to encourage a game of catch. To improve visual motor integration, that's how we use both um, visual motor, both visual information to make like a motor response. So activities to strengthen that skill are beating, sewing, copying sentences, 
and shapes and doing word searches and connect the dot, to, connect the dot activities and color by numbers. And something that I really love is to have children pick out their favorite character from a show and copy the picture. So sometimes we like to do Pokemon characters, which are pretty complex now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a fun activity and it's really engaging. It should still look like play. It should still be fun. Yeah, definitely. And another thing that we could do is follow um, exercises from the screen too, to just see how they're progressing. And it seems to be most effective when they're done daily. Again, you need oversight from a therapist, developmental optometrist to make sure they're being done correctly. Um, and then there's one more thing we wanted to go over. There's different levels of functional vision. Um, and they're a little bit more specific, but the general gist is you're moving from having the child be stationary to looking at something that is stationary. So that's actually a visual skill called fixation. So the child may be sitting and keeping their eyes on a screen um, and waiting for something to pop up, or maybe they're sitting and looking at a target and seeing how long they can keep their eyes on the target or a preferred picture, sticker on a post-it, then it moves to the child stationary and the object is mobile. Maybe they're watching a car move while they're in the car driving. Um, or the child can then be mobile. So maybe they're running and they're keeping their eyes on um, one of the other team members in a sport that they're playing, um, such as a goalie who's stationary. And then the child is mobile running and the object is mobile as well. So maybe a child running and going after a moving soccer ball. Um, also, through all of this, consider functional activities. That's the kind of thing that we're hinting at. Um, we use our eyes in everyday activities. Um, just encouraging that a little bit more, making it more sensory rich as well, and incorporating those exercises into your daily routine can be really effective for children. Um, lastly, we actually do have a couple of tests that we like to use if you're interested. Um, we have been using the Convergence Insufficiency Scale, CISS, which is a great test for families or older children to fill out to see if they're experiencing any symptoms of Convergence Insufficiency, which is when we're bringing our eyes in to a target incoming. Um, there's also the INSUCO ocular motor test, which is great and assess tracking and convergence, um, which can give you good numbers to bring to a developmental optometrist. And of course, we also do our informal ocular screen, which gives enough information to, provide, to be provided to a developmental optometrist or a school to help um, those personnel to understand kind of what's going on with that child and determine any other areas they're having difficulties with with because of that. So I think that's everything from us today. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. We're happy to do another video on any topics that you'd like us to go over. Um, we'll also link a blog down below by one of our wonderful therapists, Ms. Julie, um, that has more information on vision and more resources. Thanks guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>